Hi, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com and in today's video we're going to take a look at the flow pane in JavaFX. If this is your first time here, or if your goal is to learn all about JavaFX, please take a moment to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I publish new videos. Starting with this video and continuing for the rest of the tutorial series on JavaFX, I'm going to be using the IntelliJ IDE from JetBrains. So let's get started and create a new project. It's a JavaFX project, JavaFX application, so we'll click Next. And for the project name, I'll call it Flowpane Explorer. We'll use the default project location and click Finish. And we'll open up the main class. Up to this point in our series of tutorials, we still haven't explored FXML. And for the near future, I'm uh, not going to be doing that, although I will be covering it later in the series of tutorials. So until we get into FXML later in the series of tutorials, I'm going to continue the practice of manually creating the root of our scene graph. Today we're going to look at flow pane. So let's create a new flow pane. So a flow pane lays out its children in a flow that wraps at the flow pane's boundary. Flow panes can either be horizontal or vertical in orientation. In a horizontal flow pane, the children are laid out in rows that wrap at the flow pane's width. In a vertical flow pane, the nodes are laid out in columns that wrap at the flow pane's height. So let's have a look at how we would create a flow pane. Easiest way to create one is to use the no argument constructor. We'll change the default title that was set by IntelliJ to Flow Pane Explorer. And as I've done in the last couple of videos for the uh, VBox and the H, I'm just going to create several button controls that we can add to our layout. Just import the button class. We'll add our four buttons to the flow pane. Now the flow pane by default has a horizontal orientation so they'll be laid out in a single row from left to right. So there we see it, our four buttons, one, two, three, and four, and they're laid out within the flow pane layout from left to right. We change the width to make it smaller. Once it gets too small for the content of the flow pane, the nodes will be moved to a, a second line. So we get to the point here where the width is too small for the four buttons. The first one, number four, will, will move to the second line. The same will happen to the third button and then we get to the minimum width. So that's a flow pane with a horizontal orientation. We can change the orientation of the flow pane by calling a method on the object itself. And since we're already using a horizontal orientation, which is the default, we're going to change it to 
a vertical orientation by choosing orientation.vertical. When we run this, you should see that the four buttons, instead of being aligned from left to right in a single row, they will be aligned in a single column from top to bottom. There we are, one, two, three, four, in a single column from top to bottom. And the same sort of behavior will happen when the height of our layout gets too small for the four of them to remain in a single column, in this case because of the orientation being vertical. We get to the point where they are no longer able to be in a single column. Four will move up to the second column, and then if we resize the height to be a little smaller, button number three will also move up. One other thing that we can do with a flow pane is to set the horizontal and or vertical gap, which sets the amount of space between the child nodes within the flow pane itself. Again, that's done by calling a method on the object. We're going to set the horizontal gap. And we'll also set the vertical gap. And let's run that and see how it looks. So we have 10 pixels of space here we see between the first and the second, the second and the third, and the third and the fourth. If we were to decrease the height of the layout beyond that necessary for them all to be in a single column, we'll see that we also have the 10 pixel space on our horizontal gap. Comment this out for the moment, and we'll run it again, and we'll now see it back in the default horizontal alignment, where we'll see the, the same behavior, but in terms of the width instead of the height. So let's decrease the width, and we move down to the next line. We see the vertical gap of the 10 pixels. We continue, and vertical gap of the 10 pixels, and you also see the horizontal gap of 10 pixels. You can also set the alignment of the children in the flow layout. By using the set alignment method. And one of the constants in the POS. So I'm going to set it to top center. We'll run it. And now you should see that the four buttons should be centered within the horizontal space. You can do the same for the vertical. And that's all I wanted to say about the flow layout. If you've enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe and leave any comments or questions you might have below. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.